if. If that word if is one of the most powerful and important words in all the scripture. If you abide in my word, Jesus said, then you're truly my disciples. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When you are abiding in the word, you will know that you will not be deceived. But I'm going to make a promise to you now because it is the promise of God. If you choose not to abide in the word, not stay in the word, not be in the word, you are going to be deceived. And I'm not talking about by what's on it. I'm talking about you will be deceived by the father of lies. Your warfare is not against flesh and blood. Our warfare is against that adversary who goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. We need to be in the word constantly. Yes. Not just on Sundays, not just, listen, it's great that we can get together and have Bible studies. But if you are not in the word on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, if you're not in the word when you go to work, if you're not in the word when you're just having a family gathering, if you're not in the word then, you're going to wind up getting deceived. Mm. And I'm telling you the truth. Pay attention. The reason that this happens to the belief, to the people of God, these are the people of God that we're talking about, right? That he delivered out of Egypt through the, through the wilderness into the promised land. And now where are they? They're worshiping calves up on the mountain of Bethel. How did they get so deceived? Because they chose to ignore the word. Because the word can be difficult. <laughs> No, I, I I have seen, you study history, especially if you study church history, you will see for hundreds of years, people trying to decode, who is this Antichrist whose number is 666? And I mean, obviously, most of the time, they have been, most of the time, all of the time so far, they've been totally wrong. Okay? Now, there have been a lot of evil people around I mean, you, but Nero wasn't the Antichrist. Caligula wasn't the Antichrist. Napoleon wasn't the Antichrist. Adolf Hitler wasn't the Antichrist. Was he a type of Antichrist? Without doubt. But he was not the Antichrist. There is a spirit of Antichrist that the scriptures talks about. And if you want to know what the spirit of Antichrist is, go read from verse 60 on. In the letter of John in the sixth chapter. And if you think that it's some kind of coincidence that John chapter 6, verse 66, John 666, talks about the fact that many of his disciples walked away from Jesus, left him, because his word was too difficult for them. Mm -hmm. I see churches all over, particularly in the United States. We're looking for revival. I don't believe, I'm, I'm not looking for revival. I'm looking for the church to reform, okay. to repent. Why would you, why? You think that Jesus was standing out the door of the church of Laodicea to usher people in? No. He wasn't a greeter. You think he was the greeter for the church? <laughs> no, he wasn't. He was, it says, come out from their midst and be separate. He's calling people out of that false teaching. He's compelling them to come out. John 666. It's the apostasy falling away. that Jesus spoke of for the last days. It's the apostasy the Apostle Paul spoke of in the last days. When people, it's not just falling away, it's like, okay, I tripped over a rock and but no, you know what? They're tripping over the rock. Yeah, right. The rock of offense, okay? Over which men stumble. That's right. But they're deserting. Yeah. They are choosing to walk away. They are deserting Jesus Christ. And when you start to live like the world, when you start to act like the world, when you talk like the world, when you live like the world, you will have deserted Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, too, about back in Isaiah, about that he said they don't want to hear anymore about the whole thing. They don't thing. want to hear it. And in Amos, he taught, and God tells him that he's putting the family in. There'll be a famine for the, not for he's, bread, right. but for the hearing of the word. So it's like he's answering their request. He, he is giving them their request. Yes. You know, it's a sad thing that at, at times, I mean, God will give you requests. Yeah. Ask something of God and he'll give it to you. Be careful. 
Be careful what you ask for. Yes. I mean, the people of God gathered at Ramah so long ago mm. and said, give us a king that we might be like the other nations. He said, okay. He said, that's what you want? That's what you're going to have. But here's the way it's going to be. Go read Second, First Samuel chapter 8 and see what that is. And you will see a picture of politics today, mm. a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, and three thousand years ago when the people asked for it. God granted their request. Yes. There are a lot of things. Be careful what you pray for. Yes. You're liable to get it. Mm. Okay? Be prayerful about what you ask for. And this is the confidence which we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests which we have asked of Him.